Greetings everyone, this is Spartan uh, for YouTube, uh, you know what I mean, uh, I'm doing a tier list, I've never done a tier list before, I'm doing a tier list for the Mass Effect Trilogy, Romance, Routes, and yeah, I'm kind of nervous on this, I've never done a Rome, uh, uh, well, I've never done a tier list before, but uh, kind of want to do this. J just for fun, you know? I played through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3. I played them a lot. I know their ups, I know their downs. And when it comes to the romances, out of all of them, I only never committed one. No, actually, no, three. At least three I never fully really committed. Um, but, uh, yeah. Oh, okay, so the tier... So, let me go ahead and mention, like, what tier is for. So, S tier is, like, what I normally go for. Which ones I go straight to. A is pretty much, like, I like them. I really enjoy them. Wouldn't mind going for a, a playthrough just, just to go for that route. B is, like, average. They're not bad, but they're... I mean, they're, they're not bad, but... They could be better. It's like, eh, I mean, it's it's worth giving a shot. D is like more of a if you want to, but it, it's it, only if you want to. And the last one is don't. It's not worth it. There only I know there are like a couple that it's just not worth. Spending your time on a playthrough just for those rounds. So, without further ado, let's start off with Garrus. Uh, Garrus is a female only romance route, uh, only a romance bowl in Mass Effect 2, and able to transfer it over to Mass Effect 3. This one I, I really enjoy. I really enjoy this one. Uh, this one probably one of the better ones. It, the reason why is that sure it's awkward, it, it's weird, but it's at the same time very sweet. The thing about it, Garrus lost a lot. Uh, he lost his squad members. He lost his trust in CSEC. He lost his trust in the, the council. He lost his trust with one of his squad members that betrayed him. And more a. Uh, and most of all, you lost Shepard. And the fact that, in this case, Femship pretty much helps him out, get him back out, uh, out of that depressive state, kind of means something, you know? And sure, it's awkward having a Turian human relationship, but it, it, it works between these two. So, I put Garrus in S rank. I always like going for this route, anyways. Next is Jack. Jack is Jack is actually pretty good. Hers is like worth a playthrough for it, because uh, sure you can actually have casual sex with her, but at the same time you want to avoid that because you actually get to know her more, and you find out that sh she just gets. It's a sad one. It's definitely worth playing through. And then, and Mass Effect 3 is all... Well... <laughs> it's definitely worth playing through. And I played it, uh, played, uh, played through the, uh... 2 and 3 a good amount of time to actually play through the Jack route, so... I have to give it to A, right? A rank. It's really good, really worth it. Jacob! Jane! Okay, uh, alright, let me put an explanation why I say it's not worth it. So, oh yeah, I mentioned that Jack is also a male only route. Anyways, back to Jacob. Jacob is a female only route in Mass Effect 2, able to transfer over to Mass Effect 3. However, 
I'm just gonna say that Jacob Jacob does dirty to uh to Shepherd. Uh let's just say that No, I'm just gonna say straightforward. Jacob cheats on you. Jacob cheats on you and gets uh, and has a baby with the person who um that she cheats you on. It's so stupid. In my opinion, it's like, why? Why try to go for this romance route when you re realize that, you know, it's just not going to work, you know? It's just, I don't know. I don't know. It just pisses me off every time I s Every time. Every time I think about it, I'm like, damn, you did dirty. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's stupid. It's not worth it. I'm just saying, it's definitely not worth it. James. Okay, so James is interesting. He's only available in Master 3, of course. Um, uh, only through a female shepherd that you can flirt with him throughout the entire playthrough, and all the way to the end, he's like, it's just it's just too weird, you know. However, in Citadel, you can flirt even further beyond uh, with James to the point where he ends up uh, sleeping with you. I don't know. It, it, it's it's an interesting concept of James being fir flirted upon throughout the entire playthrough, only just to be like, nah, I, I, it just doesn't. I, you know what I mean? So I'm just gonna put uh, James. It, despite being very cute and whatnot, I gotta give it to at C. It's worth giving it a try at least once, but after that, it, it's just like, nah. Caden. I don't know why there's two Cadens. I'm gonna put only one of them. Caden. Uh, in Mass Effect One, it's uh, he's only female Shepard uh, romanceable, but in Ma uh. You can transfer able, uh, transferable to Mass Effect 2 and to Mass Effect 3. However, in Mass Effect 3, you're allowed to have a romance with Caden uh, if you're male. So, it will, so, whatever it works with you. Caden, despite being what, uh, what many people will say boring, isn't that bad as a romance. It's... it's there, but it's like, how how should I explain it? What's the best way to explain it? It's like he's a romanticizer, I guess you could say. You know, is the best way I could describe it. I mean, there there could be another uh, way of describing it, but that's how I think. So. Yeah, I, I'm gonna give uh, Kaden the B rank. It's definitely worth giving a try. It, it's worth playing through a couple of times, but there are, in my opinion, other romances. Um, Kelly Chambers. Uh, this one you can have a romance in quote romancer in Mass Effect Two with either male or sh uh, female. Shepard and transferable into Mass Effect 3. This one, it, it, it's weird. You can actually have dinner with her. That's how you pretty much initiate the whole romance thing. And you can actually f finalize it, I think, after the uh, suicide mission. But it doesn't really progress through, like, the achievement wise. That's why it's so, I don't know, it, it's nice, it's sweet, but it's very light. I mean, if you want to give it a shot, be my guess, but otherwise, I kind of want to put her in, I kind of want to put her in C. It's worth doing it at least once to see what it is, what it's like. It's not going to mess up any of your romances either, 
So that's another thing. So I'm going to put her in C for now. Liara. This one's interesting. She's romanceable in Mass Effect 1 at, for either male or female. This is a sorry's or sorry. Um, you can continue it in Mass Effect 2 and even finalize it in Mass Effect 2's DLC, Layer of the Shadow Broker. And you can even final and of course you can also finalize it in Mass Effect 3. This one's interesting because Liara as a character develops tremendously throughout the game uh, throughout the trilogy. In Mass Effect 1, she's pretty timid. She's very curious on, on everything because she's a young Asari and also the fact that all um, her overall uh, her aspect of living as an arche uh, living a life as an archaeologist, studying protein uh, artifacts, and just studying about the proteins overall uh, intrigues her. And then she gets more intrigued about Shepard and how he gets affected with all this uh, all this protein. Uh, information and that also can produce into a love interest flash forward to Mass Effect 2 after mourning after uh, what happened with the first Normandy and Shepard's initial death uh, instead of completely mourning the throughout the entire time she instead gets word from Cerberus to retrieve uh, Shepard's, well, what's left of him, his body, to resurrect him. Then the Shadow Broker intervenes as the Collectors want Shepard's body. So Liara and a defectee of uh, the Shadow Broker retrieves the body and gives it to Cer Cerberus but in the process the defectee gets captured and so Liara now has to change her overall demeanor into an uh, information broker that she just goes into in order to keep on a down low transfer into the layer of shadow broker you can tell that she has some wear and tear because she's been mourning for you uh, for two years while also waiting for a possible hope that you would come back alive and she's in, in a conflicted state while she's also trying to take down the shadow broker fast forward to Mass Effect 3 and it shows that she just cares because she just can see that Shepard's wearing down from all of what's been going down. And it just shows. Anyways, long story short, we are S tier. Definitely, uh, I, I always like going with her. Diane Allers! Uh, okay. I like Jessica, but this one w was just weird. I don't know. I mean, it, it's similar to Kelly Chambers. You can able to like flirt with her and uh, go into a, a light romance uh, with her. Uh, I gotta put her a D. Not gonna lie, it's 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 do it if you want to, but it's. Not really worth it, in my opinion. Specialist trainer. All right, for her, uh, only romanceable in Mass Effect Three, and only romanceable with female Shepard. This one was, I guess you could say hot, but it wasn't that bad. You know what I mean? 
I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this one. I mean, I like it. I, I like the, the last route. It, it had really sweet moments, especially with the uh, Citadel DLC. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess uh, it, it's worth a playthrough. Steve Cortez, uh, raw, uh, only available in Mass Effect 3, only romanceable with the male Shepard. This one, I kind of feel the same about Trainer. I feel, uh, I feel like it, it's like it was there just in case if you did not know what to do, uh, who to romance, and you never have a transfer save on uh, from the previous uh, games. So this one, it's. It's there. It exists. I don't. I don't mind it. I mean, it's nice. I actually like it, especially with the additional bonus once again with the uh, with the DLC of Citadel. Hey Draco. And uh, yeah, I think I want to put them and see. It's it's worth a playthrough. It's not bad. You know what? Let's put them in NB. It, they're not the these two aren't that bad in, in their own rights. And if you don't ha have a transfer save, I, I would say they're B worthy. Miranda, uh, this one at first I thought I didn't wouldn't like because Miranda is like almost emotionless. <laughs> In some cases, but when you romance with her, she shows a lot of emotion, especially in Mass Effect Three. If you romance her in Mass Effect Two and dress her in Mass Effect Three, you better not dump her. It, it's a sad thing. Plus, it actually if if you dump her, it actually affects. If you dump her, it uh, initially. Then she'll more than likely uh, have a terrible, problematic fate in the future. But other than that, it's actually really not bad. It's really good. I have to give it to an A rank. Not gonna lie, I really like it. Morin, don't do this route. Never do this route. It's not worth it. It. Never do this route. No matter what. It's just... It's just... You die. You literally die. If you romance with her. If you sleep with her, you die. You get a game over in Mass Effect 2. And what's worse, in Mass Effect 3... Uh, you get a letter from her saying, Oh, everything's okay. I I'm just bouncing from one system to another. I I'm okay. And then near the end of the game, you meet her as a banshee. She gets captured by the Reapers and becomes a banshee. Yeah, it's not worth it. Definitely not worth it. Tomorrow. Uh. Uh, this one is actually not not that bad. It, it's just weird that it it's it works differently. Um, this one, of course, romanceable in Mass Effect 2 by either male or female. It is very, very finicky ish, I guess you could say. I don't know. It's like. It's romanceable, but at the same time, do you really want to romance with her? I'm not saying that she's a bad character, but it's like. It's hard to explain. I mean, you can it continues in Mass Effect Three, especially with the DLC. But she belongs with the code. Not gonna lie, but it is worth a playthrough of of seeing the overall romance. Though so I'm gonna put it in C. It's worth a playthrough. Tally, you if you have not seen my streams, you already know. This is best girl, in my opinion. Um, she's romanceable in Mass Effect 2, but uh, only for male Shepard, and transferable into Mass Effect 3. 
I love this romance. Don't get me wrong. The only one downside about it, that be how Bioware kind of treated it, in my honest opinion. Uh, the photo scene. I, as much as I don't mind the photo scene, is what they did with the photo scene. Um, if you don't know about it, apparently it's a photoshopped of a pre of a different photo of a different girl, and they modified it to make it look alien-like. And people were pissed. Even myself, I was like, "What? This, was that really it?" So, but, but it, it overall the romance is very sweet. Very. I mean, to be honest, even though I was pissed about the picture, I didn't mind it in, in the long run because it, it was just. I don't know. It, it's just too sweet. Too sweet to to not pass up. It's definitely a. Playing playthrough worthy. Another reason why I'm going to do this to put her in as much as I want to put her in A rank, I'm going to put her in S rank. The reason why, if you don't romance either Garrus or Tally, those two actually get together, and, it's, and it shows in Mass Effect Three. And I'm not gonna lie, it's very it, it's it's very cute because it's like. Because they they uh they're pretty much with you throughout all three games, one, two, and three. So it's like even if you don't romance them, they got each other. You know what I mean? So and also they have similar like eating habits and whatnot, in um uh, and some similar similar aspects that they have with Turians, even though they have more of a humanoid facial body exterior look to uh, humans to an extent so it's like the Quarians are, are like at a midpoint between humans and Turians so it works Thane I feel so sorry about Thane not gonna lie Thane is <sighs> after what happened last year man but um Mass, uh, yeah, I, just thinking about it, it hurts. In Mass Effect 2, you can romance with them, with all, only with Female Shepard. Transferable into Mass Effect 3, but if you have not, if you didn't see what we, what happened, uh, in last stream, um, uh, Thane does not make it. And it's very sad. And it's very, it's even more sad if you play as a female shepherd and you romance them. It's even, it's very depressing. And then in the Citadel, it's even more sad, you know? So, I, I'm going to put Thane in A tier. It's definitely worth a few playthroughs. Definitely worth. Definitely worth playing through a couple of times because it's very sweet, especially when you play through it. Javik. Um. Okay. Javik is weird. It, it's similar to. It, it's like. It's he's only in quote in quote. Romance will in, in Mass Effect 3 through the DLC The Citadel. And not gonna lie, it sucks. But if, if you really want to, I I, I can't blame you. It, it's it's very weak in my opinion. So it, it's definitely not worth it, especially since Javik so far has been just nothing but a complete and utter douche, being all high and mighty and whatnot. And now finally, Ashley. Ashley, this is the one character I never fully commit to. I don't know why, probably because I, I kind of really are in Tally. 
you and Miranda, Jack, over her, over, uh, over Ashley, because, first things first, she's very xenophobic at, at, at the beginning of the game. Uh, uh, oh, Mass Effect 1. But, her, of course, she does grow and she does demean her away from that being xenophobic. Uh, racist. And, um. She overall does grow. But, it's like, I don't know. This is up to preference. Personally, it is worth playing through. Also, might mention this is only available through Mail Route and Mass Effect One, Trans Rebel and Mass Effect Two, and you can t continue or start it in Mass Effect Three. So for Ashley, I'm gonna put her in B. It's, I, after experience it myself, not that bad, and. I might, I might think about it. I might think about doing. Uh, well, it depends, because uh, in our playthrough, I'm more than likely might romance Tally, but I might do an, a separate save and play it on my own just to ex experience Ashley's. Well, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is my tier list. I don't know how to feel. Not gonna lie, I do not know how to feel. I mean, I mean, you can tell that I kind of like these characters right here. These, eh, and then this one just is worth a playthrough. Give them, give them a shot. But uh, yeah, that's. I think that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and end it off for YouTube. Uh, thank you everyone for watching on the YouTube side. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you guys later.